Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is September 5th, 2014. My name is Lynn Marquedant and I'm your host. So welcome to an hour's worth of working together on our projects. Anything fiber related, bring it on in and sew with me. That's the whole point of Fibercast, is to get things done. And I have so many things to bring you up to speed on, share with you what I've accomplished, what I haven't accomplished, and talk about what is now the new school year. So congratulations. I am pretty sure most of you who are going to school or have school-aged children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, are in the throes of getting back to it. So congratulations. You, uh, you made it through the first week of September. So welcome. So the very first thing I wanted to show you was Oh, I have some things in front of me and I can't decide which to pick. Well, we'll just go right for the edibles. Look at what we grew. Is that the funniest looking tomato you've seen? I'm sure many of you have them just like that. And it's so juicy and ripe, it's, it's ready to cut into. So I know that we have talked about the garden and this was one of many tomatoes that we're getting out of the garden. So Bridget, good job. And um, if anyone is around our neck of the woods and you want a tomato, we have some. So that was number one. And because it looks like a heart, that brings me to, sort of, if you use your imagination, brings me to item number two. And then I promise we're going to get right into quilting. We have more Dear Janes to make. But I wanted to show you that we made progress on the hexi pin cushion. So if you weren't with us a few weeks ago, my sister Karen and I did some freeform hexi making and we both started our pin cushions. And this was one of them. The other side has the little boy. Can't really see it. But um, I went to the reptile department of Petco and I got us some smashed up walnuts and of course I got us a bag that is that big. We will have pin cushions forever. And I filled it in and I'm kind of excited about my little hexi pin cushion. And we could really play with the different hexes. All it took was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hexes. So that was another thing I wanted to, to share with you. And I hope that you have picked up a project. I'm giving you another minute before I start sewing. So pick up your knitting, your quilting. I know some of you have started a Dear Jane, which just warms my heart. That was another thing I wanted to tell you about, was they are up at the Bennington Museum in Vermont. If you haven't seen it yet, they're going to bring out the original Dear Jane quilt this Sunday. So look for it online. It's in Bennington. It's southern Vermont. And it would be a fun fun time up there. I believe there's a woman up there who's giving a talk at 2 p.m. on Sunday. So check that out. That would be September 7th, 2014. So without further ado, let's get into sewing. And then I'll show you a few more things. And as always, send me questions, emails, uh, at lmarquedot at gmail.com or post it on YouTube or the Google site Simply Colorful or Facebook Simply Colorful and believe it or not even though I may not read it right here I do see all of your comments and I love them and believe me this is uh, this is really fun for me so thank you for indulging it indulging me and um, letting me know what you're doing so with that let me just go online because I thought I saw Joyce's out there. Hi, Joyce. And she posted something on the Simply Colorful timeline. Again, this Fibercast is just all about getting things done. And it's amazing what we can get done in 60 minutes. And I want to welcome some new folks. That's what I wanted to do right off the bat. Akili Akai, I hope I've said that right. Welcome. It was so nice to see your note. 
Julia Adams, Karen Doe, Joni L. again, and let's see, Joan, Joan S., so good to see you. She said she got her Dear Jane book today, wonderful, just like this one. Now I can follow you when you're doing your blocks. Oh, isn't that fun? I'm not going to start any until I move. Perfect. Oh, I want we want an update on your move. She says, because I have so much of my things packed away, I'm going to read and look at all the pictures and maybe plan what colors I want to make the quilt. Perfect. I would like to finish a few other things before I start this. I understand. But watching you do these blockers made me get the books and do this. You make things look so easy. Oh, boy. <clears throat> With all my mistakes and everything. We will see. Thank you so much for your time and the fun you show us in your 60 minutes of sewing. Oh, thank you for sending this, and I apologize if I'm reading this too much to everyone. Um, I feel you are in my sewing room and with me every Friday night, and you make me laugh a lot. Joni in Minnesota. Well, and from Joni's iPad, no less. That's wonderful. I'm so, so glad to hear that. Karen is out there. Hi. She says, tonight I'm finally getting labels on this spring's quilts. Good for you. This is good. People are back to it. She's watching the red tornadoes on TV and waiting for Fibercast. Bob's working, so choosing Fibercast over Friday Night Lights was a little easier. Oh, good. I'm supposing the red tornadoes are a football team out there in Pennsylvania. Maybe they're Mount Carmel. Oh! Oh, check out this. Aww. This is a label that Karen has made. I hope you can see it better on YouTube. Oh, and I bet that's going on the back of your Simply Colorful Mystery Quilt, and it's called Hug Your Sister. Oh, and quilted by Karen Mor Moriello and pieced by Karen Bryant Marinelli. I love that label. You have to show me how to do that. We'll have to do the, the uh, double Google session. People have said they want to do that, so we're doing it. Oh, and is it Le Line Woodall? Just caught the 829 fiber cast. Thought you might like to know about a tool that makes paper piecing easier for me. It's an add a quarter ruler. I love that. I do have one. So thank you. And you know what? I'll bring it out in our next session because I don't know quite where it is. Um, first pre-fold all the lines in your pattern. Then line up the first two pieces of fabric like you do in sew on the line. Next, press open the fabric, fold back the pattern on the sew line, lay your ruler down with the lip, and then cut it a quarter of an inch. It is really good. Clean up the first seam. I hope that others are seeing that. So if not, I'm going to post your tip. That's a great tip. Thank you. And welcome. So let me get right to the first block. And, and several of you have sent in tips last week that I wanted to make sure to get to. But first, let's go right to Dear Jane. We're going to do our first triangle bottom block. And it's called Candy Dish. And it is BR4. And I had it open. Top row. Bottom row. All right. So here's how Jane did it all those years ago in the 1800s. And I have printed out, because I also do have the CD, I've printed out a one-page pattern in real size, and it's numbered. And there are two parts down here, one and two, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. But just so you know, there are three parts. In each triangle down here, there are two pieces, one and two. Then in this corner, there's another piece, one and two. And then all the rest of the piecing goes from top to bottom from 1 to 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the two corners first. I'm going to do 1 and 2 here and then go over here and do 1 and 2. So hopefully you can see that on your book a little bit better. I'm going to do again those two bottom colors. And I originally was going to do use this blue with this white, but I discovered that this blue has a little red in it, so I'm going to keep that out and use it for something else. I found it up in my attic and I just love it. 
because I looked at my current pieces, and remember I'm going for that beach theme, and none of them have red in it, so I'm really going to stick away from this. And I know as you look at this, you can't really see the red, but I have so much fabric that will work instead of that. I'm just going to leave that. So my plan is to use this. Oh, and last week's, I don't know if you can see behind me, last week's block is done, and it is the starburst on the top row, second to last one over that way. This way, sorry, this way. Second one from the top, from the left. <laughs> and it was fun to do and so easy. So I highly recommend that one to get your feet wet to get started. So now I'm going to, oh, had a funny little experience. I remember last week both I had to get up because I was streaming and, and the, the video was playing on my other PC. And then do you remember last week I was using pinking shears because I didn't even have regular scissors with me? And I was telling Bob this when we were up looking for a camper last last weekend, which is a whole other story that I do have to bring you up to date on. He said, what a rookie move. <laughs> he was right. They told him it was taking me a while to get back into the swing now that I was back in the studio. But that was pretty funny. Anyway, I have all the necessary tools tonight. And again, when I am doing this, I am not worried about wasting fabric. And I it pains me to say that, but even saying that, on that star burst that I did last week, in two places I still cut my fabric too sl small and I had to add on. It just, with paper piecing, and I'm still kind of new to it, it just is not worth it to do all this work and then end up short. So. Um, I know some of the patterns that Sarah does, for example. Hi, Sarah, if you're out there. Part of the pattern literally tells you how to cut out your pieces, which is really efficient and really advanced. But I'm not there yet. Um, so here are my two pieces for the two bottoms. And then I need two white pieces. And again, I'm going to use very big ones. Although that's too big and I don't need it. Famous last words, you know what? I'm just going to use it. And now, as always, and you're right, if I had that add a seam ruler, which I do somewhere here, and I really appreciate that tip. I think it's probably time to break that out and get into that habit. Especially because a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was the August 29th episode that you watched, I really, Joyce came over and she gave me tips and really I went back to basics and it was so helpful. I did a better block than I had in a long time because I took my time, I followed the directions. I literally have my Bernina set on half speed here. And I have my stitch down to 1.8. And the reason, of course, for the thinner stitch is it makes the paper easier to pull off when we're done. And I ran out of newsprint. I need a good source for paper piecing paper. Um, so I have regular, um, see, so here's the, the tip, and I think it's lean wood all. Instead, uh, there is a ruler that you can put down here and literally create a beautiful, nice quarter inch seam. Because my blocks are really little, I have been tending to do by hand, trimming it up to like, ooh, three sixteenths. So in between an eighth and a quarter. 
but again I'm gonna I will bring that ruler so there is the start okay and I'm just finger pressing I'll get my iron ready and I'll do the same thing over here you wouldn't know it's fall up here in the Northeast it's it was 90 degrees here today those children in school must have been very hot oh I love to see the pictures. Kelsey, that quilt you made for your son for college was just beautiful. I was curious if that's your own pattern or if whose pattern and design that was. I really liked that. I think I'm putting it on my list. And who's getting exciting, excited for fall mysteries? Speaking of new quilts to put on our list. And I'm pretty proud of us, you know. We didn't start a big project this summer. Hopefully, I hope, and I'm feeling good about that. I'm feeling like I've got some things in order and, and continued to work on some projects that I had already started. Now, my hexes were new, but that's like this project, which will take forever and a day, so I figured why not succumb to that desire. Anyway, fall is here, and I can feel it in the air, excitement about the guild meetings. Whose guild meetings are starting up? We had our first planning, well, no, that's not true. Our last planning meeting before everyone comes back to the first guild meeting next Tuesday. Oh, I forgot to trim that. And we have Jen Sorensen as our guest speaker from A Quilting Jewel. We're so excited. She's going to talk about modern quilting. I think I've mentioned it this summer. So it's finally here. And I'm excited. I'm excited to meet some of the new people. One of our themes for this year is to get to know each other better. And that's hard. You know, once a month, with especially with... Our guild membership is a lot of working people, a lot of, of uh, active community folks. Just everyone is very busy. As I don't know, in my experience, most quilters are. It's just our nature. Um, oh, wrong color. So we meet once a month. We're going to start to have these very um, free form sewing workshops every month which is great I've literally put it on my calendar and I am just going to dedicate that day once a month to just like Friday nights you know it's amazing what you can get done in 60 minutes imagine what we can get done in six hours so that is the plan um, I'm hoping others want to do it and if they don't that's okay too but we've we've decided to rent a room up at the church and so once once a month we know we have a place to be a little bit more disciplined have some community and some camaraderie have a good lunch celebrate a birthday or two you know I know Jean you and you and Lima do it with the vintage quilters, which I on Thursday mornings, I think. And that always looks so fun. Anyway, I'm my mind is going all over the place because I just have so many things to tell you. So our guild is starting up next week. Tell me about your guild. Isn't it hard to believe that this is going to become a triangle for dear Jane? I love the contrast. Love, love, love it. And it's so hot here. Let's see who's out there. Oh, Becky is on the Simply Colorful timeline. One thing I need to figure out is how to get there from here. Judy's out there. Hi. 
Judy says, that's a good tomato, so big, very easy to get the program tonight. Oh, yay. Thanks for letting me know. That's awesome. I bet you have tomatoes galore, too. I finally looked at some pictures from this summer, and there are some pictures of you in the garden, and the corn is a full, I don't know, was it 18 inches, 2 feet above you? You had a good crop this year. Awesome. I'm so glad that it's easy to, to get to where Quilts of Love, welcome. Oh. Let me keep going because I think we're on a roll. I haven't made a mistake yet that, that any of us know about. That's a first. These little pieces are tiny. They're going to be like a quarter of an inch in width. So, at first, I'm starting with big pieces, but I bet you I'll be able to cut them down and reuse the pieces if I don't do it too. One, two, okay, three. This is crazy. Oh, and again, if I put it up to the light, that helps a lot. And I can go past the line because the next piece will just go over it. See, now look at this back. I just did that line. And I'm going to have to cut all of that off. But I think that the piece is going to be so big, that blue piece, that I can reuse it. And this is where the ruler... See that piece? Okay, we'll fold that back. Finger pressing is a beautiful thing. See, now I'm tempted to use that little piece, but I will regret it. There we go. So I'm going to use a bigger piece, and I'm just going to do the other side here. I discovered I have at least two different types of whites already in my quilt. It's classic for me. And I noticed some of the whites are front and back, aren't right. So some of them I have used the back side. Okay. Have to think a little bit more about this. All right, there we go. See, and again, there's a lot on the back, but I'll just cut it. Think of how far we've come. Remember doing the Bonnie Hunter challenge last fall? No, when was that? Oh, we started New Year's Day, so last winter. So that's another thing. There. I am doing Bonnie Hunter's Challenge again, and I would love for anyone to do it with me. I'm going to do it, you know, her, the way it works. For those of you who may not know, Bonnie Hunter is from Quiltville, or she owns Quiltville. And as a thank you to her customers and her students, she does a mystery quilt every fall, and then she puts it in a book. And what happens is, the middle of October, she'll give us our paint chips. And she'll tell us how much fabric of each we need. And you can go with her color scheme, or you can go with something completely different. Then, the day after Thanksgiving, she will post the first clue. And then, every Friday, until it's done, and you don't even know how many clues she's going to have, because as she says, it's a mystery. What, it, what fun 
it's a lot of work, so I should. It's fun to see the clues. It's fun to see what other people do. It just uh, and at the end, it was very satisfying because the quilt. I made Celtic Solstice last year, as many of you know. The pieces were small, and they were smaller than I probably would have done on my own. And I'm kind of proud of that quilt. So, doing it again. Love to have everyone do it with us. So every Friday night, that's what I'll be working on. We have one week also to complete that thought. <laughs> that would be a novel thing for me. <laughs> On Friday, she posts the clue in the morning at 7. So over coffee, you can see the clue. Then you go to work, and then that night, we'll probably do some cutting and probably sew a unit or two. And then we have a week to finish those units. And at the end of the, the week, you have, you know, whether it's 50 or 100 little units. And you put those aside, and then by the following Friday, she'll give us another clue. And that goes for a few weeks until she reveals it usually before Christmas. And then you put it all together. And she does link ups and she also has a friends page where people post their progress and pictures. And let's see. Okay, six is what we're on. This is where the numbers are so helpful because I'm literally looking over here One thing that, it is surprising how long each of these blocks takes. Or maybe not surprising, but just, Joan, Joni, I'm psyched that you're interested in it. And it's so satisfying even to do just one block. Like I was looking at this, this little grouping. That's not a lot of blocks. That's probably one third of what Joyce out there has. But it's kind of cool to see progress. And it'll get done. Or at any time, I can stop and make it into a doll blanket or a baby's blanket. So it's coming together. And I'm just going down the road. And you know what? I'm going to keep this long and try that and then just cut off. So maybe I'll use a little less fabric. See? I can't help myself. Oh, wasn't it fun? I have to say, I thoroughly enjoy seeing the kids' back-to-school photos on Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to fold this over. This is where I'm going to get into trouble. I don't have my quarter-inch ruler. See, it's coming together here. Let me, let me do this. We're getting there. The pieces will be bigger. Okay, now we have a blue one. I'll do this next arrow and then I'll check and see who's out there. Oh, and I can tell you about the camper. Oh, I have so much to tell you about the camper. So last week, well, maybe I should back up. I, for a while, have been intrigued by this glamour camping. You've heard me talk about it, I know. <laughs> Nausea. And come to find out, many of you are campers or can relate, which I love. 
So Peggy, uh, in Australia, thanks for your note. I love to hear that your family was, was into, I think you called it caravanning, which I love too. So I'm into camping, but I want to do it in a very artsy way. And let's, now's a good time probably to, to stop. My friend Chris and her daughter Abby were, I think I mentioned this to her a while back, and she said, oh, I have a magazine called Studios. And they have some of these art campers. And she gave me this magazine, and it's going to be, it's going to get all worn for, because I'm just going to keep looking at it. And I wanted to share with you three art studios that have been made in a camper. There are, and believe it or not, there's an artist from New Hampshire, an artist from Maine, and an artist from Florida. And they've done different things with the campers, but they're all like 1960s campers. Retro vintage campers. So here's the first one, and and every sing, all three of them, you know, they're interviewed. They've always done things with their hands their whole life. Um, they've always been keeping kept busy, um, probably as a way to calm themselves down or for whatever reason. And they just felt the need to express themselves. And one of them was moving across country, and she needed something to put things in anyway. Another one is a traveling artist, so she puts her, her artwork in the camper as she goes to events. Another one down in Florida, actually, it looks like she's almost become a tourist destination. She paints outside of her camper, and people come by. So enough talking. I just have to show you this one from New Hampshire. Can you see that? So it's like a 14-footer that she's painted that turquoise or Tiffany bluish um, green. And I love this. I mean, look at her artwork. She's got the canopy outside. It looks like maybe she sells her artwork in it. This one, I think she... Um, I'm not sure she left the bed in. No, she didn't. She and her husband took out the bed and the toilet. Who knew these little campers have toilets in them? I really, half of me doesn't even want to think about how these work. And I'm sure that's why Bob does not want to go near this. Because I have had this epiphany that I actually am not very handy. And so getting one of these will mean he's going to have to help me. So either that or if I could approach this like I approach sewing, I could do it. But I somehow just, the so the camper we went up to look at was a 1966 Shasta in New Hampshire. The woman has since called me and said she's lowered the price. So instead of $1,400, now it's $1,200. It was in pretty darn good shape. Lots of um, original work or things. It did have a leak in the top. There was a vent that had leaked, so we'd have to replace the vent and replace some wood up there. Um, she said she, has, she had new tires. She had to pack the bearings, pack the ball bearings. And I knew when she was talking about packing the ball bearings that that was not going to be for me. But Bob did look inside and out, and it was a really, really fun couple of hours. And now I have to show him this book. And I think slowly, slowly we'll get them there. It'll take a few years, but we'll get them there. So that is the main camper. Let's go, no, I'm sorry, that's the New Hampshire camper. Here's the main camper. And this is Rebecca, I should be giving their names, Rebecca Shelley from Portland, Maine. She had this camper and she knew she'd be moving. You see that? And so she rehabbed this camper, and I love it, too. She's a painter, and she's into gardening. And down here in the lower page, she shows what it looked like beforehand. And then she gets to finishing it and basically puts paints in the refrigerator and uses the sink for something else. And she uses the, most of them use the table for the painting. Like that. I don't know if you can see that. 
all of her paints. And her garden outside, that was kind of cute, oh, right over here. Looks like where she parks it, she has a garden outside. So that's the one from Maine. Very cute, again. And then this one, now put your sunglasses on, because this is like, wow. This is Leoma Lovegrove from Matlach Island, Florida. Matlach Island. And if anyone knows her, let us know, because this is a hoot. She's the one on the cover. And this is her studio. And she paints inside and out all those colors. So again, I think there's one more page here. This is the Studios Magazine, and it is issue summer 2014, so it's this summer. And it's no wonder I can't find any of these old campers. They're all being all retroed already. I'm going to miss this trend if I don't hurry up. Or should I say fad? Ah, one more. Oh, she even has clothes in here that she paints that same color. So, I really, I feel like writing these folks and thanking them for entertaining me because I just love those. So, that, oh, here's another one. We want to save these. I printed out more triangles. Huh, on the thought we might finish this one. So, I'm still in search of campers. My sister sent me a link to Tin Cam Camper. I think that's what it's called. And it looks like a really good site for folks who do rehab them. They have a they have some for sale. In my dreams, I want to just drive along the side of the road and find one that has vines all growing over it go knock on the door and offer someone some, I don't know, maybe, you know what? How much of a camper will that get me? <laughs> I have more where this comes from. <laughs> I don't think that would get me much of a camper. In fact, I am on the Lions Club, and, or, and I was more active than I am now. And we used to do a bottle drive in the supermarket parking lot every Saturday morning. Great way to raise money for eye research and uh, vision research for the Lions here in Hopkinton. And I did it with my mother-in-law and father-in-law, and it was, it was great. We had one of these old campers, I kid you not. And every Christmas, in addition to doing the bottle drive, we would sell trees, Christmas trees. And we would sit in that camper right at that table and get ourselves warm before we go out and load another Christmas tree. Well, do you think I can find that camper anywhere? I've been literally driving around town looking for it. <laughs> Word has it that it, the Boy Scouts have it because the Lions, we, stopped doing those things and we gave it to the Boy Scouts in town to take take on. So it's somewhere, but isn't that ironic that it's a type of camper that that I now am obsessing over. How many of you label your quilts? I think we all need to do that. That's a good reminder, Karen. Who's going to do the Bonnie Hunter? Let us know. And the thing is that that doesn't start until November. So, and I, and I recognize that doing these Dear Janes probably won't be all that exciting for too many more. You know, I think, I figure. We did it this summer sort of as a way to stick to our knitting, just work on what we have at home. 
and um, not start anything new. Um, but you know, maybe maybe there's something to be done between now and Bonnie Hunter starts. In fact, oh, I almost did that wrong. You guys are going to laugh, and maybe this is what I'll do next week. My Gail Wilson doll pattern, doll kits. They keep showing up. I got one this week. I got one. I, I received one in the mail this week that had two kits in it. One was a upholstered chair for that mini, my little mini hitty doll. The other one was for a fancy outfit. I forget which outfit. So maybe we'll do that. And maybe that's when we bring in a guest. One of the other things we're doing you know, this year is we're going on a, a road trip. We're going down to Dragonfly Quilt Shop one night, so that'll be fun and different. Um, we're doing a lot of teaching each other, which is great. Sarah, you've met Sarah, is coming and giving us a trunk show. So on behalf of all of us, we thank you, Sarah, very much for giving of your time and talent. Okay, we're making progress. I have to remember to make my pieces a little bigger because the oh, oh you know what I'm gonna do? Duh. I'm going to cut off some of this extra paper. I hope I don't regret that. Bob is downstairs with the band tonight. They have a, a little bit smaller crew and they he was up here printing off lyrics. They're doing some old songs. I want to say a Bob Seeger song. So that's fun for them. Oh, and actually, I'm heading down to West Virginia in the middle of October. That's right. We're going to do a few of these on the road. We'll be in Nashville the end of September. I actually don't go to Nashville until Saturday, so Friday night we'll be here and maybe we'll do something special down there on Saturday or Sunday. I'd love to see, go to a quilt shop down there, see what they've got. Um, then, in the middle of October, probably right around when Bonnie releases her colors, we're going to West Virginia to see a Baylor West Virginia football game. Just like last year we went to Clemson, this year we have a nephew going there, so that's going to be fun. So take a look at this back. I don't know if you can see that. Very wonky. Now what I do is I clean it up. Like that. And then I finger press it open. Like that. There's nothing like contrast. Oh, maybe it's getting bigger. Let's see how big is this next triangle. Yeah, it's a bigger triangle. So I only have 
one, two, three blue triangles left. That's cool. In fact, I'm going to cut that out right now. Oh, I'm using the wrong scissors. Okay, that's plenty. <laughs> All right, there are our three blue triangles. Let me see who's out there. Linda, I hope you're there. Linda, you were so funny saying that you kept forgetting on Friday nights to join us live. I love that. You probably saw me reference your mother's quilts last, last not your mother's quilts, your mother's braided rugs and how I need a lesson. I have not made any progress on that project for the, for the record, but I will show you progress. Carol, oh, I'm so glad Oh, Carol says, I'm sorry to be missing tonight's fiber cast. She's out shopping for a new dining room table without any luck whatsoever. Hmm. Well, it's probably with my camper. <laughs> Keep us posted. That's fun. And, Carol, thank you for the idea for the backpack. Years ago, I made some quilted backpacks, and she was suggesting I have them here in the studio. And I think I've given them all away. I may have a few cut out that I never sewed together, but thanks for that suggestion. I'll keep looking. Sandra, hi. Sandra says, our guild meets all year long, second Monday each month. Oh, that's great. That's great. We take the summer off for now. Um, Monday each month. Sandra says they have morning group and night group. That's cool. Then they eat lunch and many sew until 3. We have sew day on the third Friday and charity sew day about each quarter. That's cool. I like that idea too. So we're kind of doing the same thing, although we're doing our sews on Saturdays instead of your Fridays. Instead of this year, I don't think we're doing a charity. I know we're not doing a charity project because we're doing a raffle quilt for our quilt show, which is this fall. And we, we usually did that about once a quarter, too. So that's cool. I'm watching you on my phone again. You're so funny. And was very clear, but now blurry. Uh-oh. Hmm. Maybe my phone. Enjoying your block, too. Haven't started mine yet. Oh, I can't wait to see what you do with yours. Have you checked out the Dear Jane Facebook groups? I bet you'd like those. And thank you for telling me about your guild. That's how you get things done. Oh, and oh, I'm so glad. And am I saying this right? Line. Oh, okay. Here we go. Um, by the way, the way to say my name is to say the first letter like a vowel, and then the second half is lean, like lean over or leaning tower of Pisa. So it's L lean. Not really important, just thought you might be curious. I'm totally curious. So for everyone there, this is a first name spelled L-L-I-N-E. So L-L-E-A-N. So say name, first letter like a vowel. So L, and then the second half is lean. So it's L-Lean. L-Lean. Now, you guys can all take a vote or a bet on whether I remember that for the next Firecast, but I promise I will try. <laughs> I really do. So, Eileen, thank you for writing again, and now let's see what, what you have to say. You must be cringing when you see me do my sloppiness. Watching you making the block and thought maybe making your blue squares a little bigger and cutting it on the diagonal, you might lose a little less fabric. Just a thought. Okay. Watching you make the block, thought maybe making your blue squares a little bigger and cutting it on the diagonal, I definitely you mean like I could have cut off some. Let's try this next one. So I've got this square.
So L lean, L lean. I'm curious where your name came from. If it came from, is it a family name? Okay, so now, now I did that. Now I've cut off the excess. Now I will finger press down. You know, you feel so good because when you do this paper piecing because you really can do some pretty precise work. Pretty remarkable. Oh, I bet you mean I could do this on the diagonal. All right, my next one, I'll do that. Just keep cutting. After this, we only have two more triangles. Hmm. I wonder what kind of dining room table Carol is looking for. She's looking for a modern one or a, a traditional one. I'm just going to keep motoring through. I'm going to keep you in suspense and not even show you that triangle. <laughs> I think I saw that Bonnie Hunter is doing quilt cam on Monday. For anyone who watches her, I'll be watching for sure. So after we went and looked at the camper, <laughs> and I promise, I like I tell my family, I'll stop talking about the camper eventually. I really will. Once I get on to something else. After we looked at the camper, which was in southern New Hampshire, Bob and I drove over to the coast. So we went over. We were going to go to Portsmouth, but then we looked on the map and we decided to go toward Gloucester and Manchester by the sea just because it was a little closer. And we had a it started to get dark, but it was pretty. By the time we just as we got there, it, it became dark. Um, so we had dinner at just a little place there. And then we drove home in probably the worst rainstorm I have been in in a long time. I don't know if you all remember it. It was last, when did we do that? Sunday. Last Sunday it went up the coast and in fact by the time we got home we heard that Worcester, which is further west from me, from us, they'd had a tornado. That's how powerful that storm was. crazy. Now, I have to be careful not to catch the fabric in the lower end, right? See, this is the problem. Look at all this fabric I'm using. Killing me. Eileen, did you tell us where you're where you hail from? We had some folks calling from Southern California last week. Lauren, I think. And then Karen. Karen out in San Diego. It must be about quitting time for you, I hope anyway.
Love to get your note. Karen said she enjoyed learning together on Fibercast, and I have to tell you my parents taught us that. Just to keep learning. Not that I do it in all parts of my life, because like I say, I'm not very handy. In fact, I probably wouldn't even change a light bulb if Bob and I now, he's, I mean, I, I married up, I can just tell you that much, and he has gotten smarter and realized that some things he just has to let sit there until I do it myself. So, well, <laughs> whether it's the battery and the smoke alarm or a light bulb that's gone out, it can be months. Months! And we'll be hearing a chirp. Chirp! And we'll look at each other while we're watching TV. Did you hear something? So, anyway, pretty funny. Okay, now the question is, how in the world are we going to join these? So we literally, we've created that part, right? And then if I turn this over, we have this triangle put in. How am I going to do that? I could applique a triangle, which I'm not going to do but I could. This is where there are so many different ways we can skin the same cat. As a first step, I'm going to sew the big line across the top. You know what though, before I do that, I'm sorry didn't think this through, how we would do this part. So if I had that ruler, like Eileen is suggesting, this would be cleaner. In fact, why don't we do this? Knock on wood, I don't think we've made one bad stitch yet, have we, tonight? That's pretty good. We're starting our school year off with a bang. Okay. So, again. Oh, and we're almost through with the hour. I cannot believe how this time flies. What did you get done in your 60 minutes? I hope it was a lot, if nothing more than just thinking and dreaming about the school year ahead. Um, thank you as always. I have more things in my head to, to tell you about, like my hexes, but I'll wait until next week. And I love the label idea, Karen. Awesome job. That reminds me to do that. I'm so glad we have some new folks joining us, and of course Joni and Sandra and Kelsey and Jean and Linda and everyone who tunes in every week. I'm so, so thankful. And we'll finish this one up, and then Okay, probably hmm. 
well, you know what? I think I'm going to have to get kind of fussy here. Oh, no, I won't. So here's what we have so far. We're going to live on the edge. And I know we're going over. Give me one more minute because I want you to see a finished block. Hmm. <laughs> this should be broken candy dish. Okay, so here's what we have. Now, and I've cut that longer to take into account the seam, but because I made these so big, it's going to work. So there's one half. We'll finger press that. And the key is <laughs> make sure I line up my white. Piece of cake. You're all so in good to so good to indulge me. I just want to finish this and show you. quite work but that's why we have fiber kits and that's why we have next week I can make it work Ugh. so my my blues I think are a little too short but that is candy dish I'll, I'll fix it up and I'll post it thank you all for joining simply colorful fiber cast I really appreciate it send me emails I'll look online have a great week Make something, and I'll see you here next Friday night, 8 p.m. Bye, everyone. Click.